Hello there, it's Lauren with Lauren Elizabeth Animal Art. If you're new here, welcome. I'm a pet and wildlife animal artist, mama, color fanatic, and after many, many of your requests, I can finally give you this black lab tutorial showing you how exactly I create abstract black fur. And in case you missed it, the Master Animal Fur Video and Ebook Painting Guide is complete. That's in the online Animal Art Masterclass, link down below. But guys, let's get started. Now, majority of the materials used for this painting is from Moose Kits. They kindly sent me this box for acrylic painters, both experienced and also those brand new to acrylics. These are curated art kits delivered monthly, including all the supplies you'll need and even a little booklet with tutorials so you can explore a different style or medium. Kits for illustrators, comic strip artists, watercolorists, even chalkboard painting. You can find a link to check out Moose Kits down below. Now I'm gonna pull up a reference photo of this black lab in just a second. I did choose at first a turquoise background, but then I realized I just had too much blue in this painting. So I decided later to pull in some orange, pink, and yellow into the background, which I apply much later in this process. So my first tip when it comes to creating this blue-violet fur for your black lab, get that background down, but it's okay if you need to change it later because of how short this breed's fur is, we can work around it. It's much easier to do this with short fur than it is to long fur. And balance out the blues and violets in the fur using either yellow or orange, or a combination of the two, or even some pink in there. These are color complements that we want to use. Now I'm working from a vibrant color palette with many, many different combinations of violet and blue, pink and blue, violet and pink, even some yellow and violet, black and violet, just mixing up dark and medium and a few light values, not even looking at the reference photo. When I have them all mixed up, I can easily just grab the color and place it where I want it. And this is actually so simple when you understand value. Color value is everything if you want to be able to create depth and dimension in your pet portraits. So let me unpack this in terms of color. So in my reference photo, where I see areas that are almost black, they look like a very deep brown, that's where I apply a dark violet. That's violet with a little bit of black or violet with my phalo blue. Now medium values, those are the joiner colors I call it. Joining the dark and the light values can be a bit harder to spot and mix the right colors for. So for teaching purposes, let's jump to our light values and that will help us figure out those in-between colors that will use a mixture of the light values with a bit of the dark values to get those medium values. So for the light areas on the dog, it looks almost this orange brown, a little bit of yellow in there as well. There's strong orange light hitting the dog. I take it as sunset. So instead of using orange browns, I went with light blues with cyan mixed with a little bit of phalo blue and white. I also added some pink to violet. So that's fluorescent pink with violet and some white. Those are the colors that I used instead of what we're seeing, which is like an orange brown in the reference photo for our lightest values. Now, once you've spotted your darkest and your lightest values on the black animal or black lab in this case, you can more easily find your medium values, those joiner in between colors by mixing a little of your light value with a little of your dark value. And then you slowly add in more of your light value to capture the correct lightness. I talk a lot about this in my creative color guide. It's not about matching the color here, it's about matching how light or dark it is. Now, once you've found your dark and light values, which helps you to then mix the colors you need for your medium values, 
what you want to do is lay them down in clusters of lines. Now for the body of this Labrador, I'm alternating between an angle brush by Arteza and a flat brush. I have a list of materials in the description box below. This helps me create that short to medium length fur. It looks more like dabs, however, around the face, which is where I'll use my liner brushes and my thin detail brushes to create those shorter length, delicate strands around the face. But they do get a bit longer around the ears, so even a medium size flat brush would do very well around the ears of a lab. Now by this point, I've covered up all the white except for that collar. And it's at this very point in the process that I see a lot of artists just get blocked. They've applied dark values and many light values and then were able to mix up their medium values, but it just looks a little sloppy. It also doesn't look finished. And my tip for this part is mix up more of your medium values and try and place them where you see a big jump between your extreme darks and your extreme lights. Once I apply more of these joiner colors, then I can more easily spot whether I need to darken up some of those dark values or lighten up some of those light values. Where I need adjustments is so much easier when I've placed those medium values in the correct spots. And we can find those just because they border they slightly overlap those dark and light values. It's the ugly phase. It's supposed to look messy at this point. It's supposed to literally look ugly for quite a long time. I've found that the more I paint, the more I become comfortable sitting in that ugly phase. But with that expectation, that anticipation that every brush stroke will help put the puzzle piece together to create that finished masterpiece. So once I could see that orange collar up against the blue violet fur, I felt so much more comfortable giving a second coat with new colors of fluorescent pink, yellow ochre, and white for the background. I don't normally do this, but I did leave a little bit of turquoise border around the dog, keeping it much more white and yellow ochre at the top and more fluorescent pink and yellow ochre towards the bottom. Now I wanna real quick show you a view of my paint palette. Before each painting session, before I even pick up a brush, I try to mix up as many colors as I think I'll need. So if I can help it, all I have to focus on are those values, creating the shapes and clustering lines. Then I don't have to worry so much about the exact colors that I'm trying to get for those abstract colors. So let's do a quick review. At the very beginning of my process, I'm focused on covering up the white after I get that background in as well. I lay down my main dark and light values. I add in the medium values that I think belong there. And then for the next phase, still in the ugly phase, I join my darkest and my lightest values with more layers of medium values. Now at this point, what I want to do is tighten things up. I want to look for any of those little white specks that need to be covered, but also fine tuning and refining any of those lines so that they layer over top one another and they're thin, they're the proper length, the proper width. So it's at this part in the process that I'm revisiting all my dark, medium, and light values while really slowing down my pace, being very specific with every individual strand so that I can get that fur looking realistic. I found this to be the most challenging because there's areas on the body that look almost jet black. So I altered the light source a little bit in this painting, making it come from the back of the lab a little bit more than what we're seeing in the reference photo so that I can get more lighting on the fur on the side. Now this is the best part about this painting, but I had never ever planned on adding any flowers to this portrait. I was just gonna keep it a relatively simple background, not adding anything but the dog to the foreground. And what happened was totally accidental. Yep, I was too vigorous with my brush strokes on the background that it dropped into my paint. And as you can see here, all the paint just globbed on the bottom and immediately I thought, okay, 
This is a blessing in disguise. I just have to figure out how it's gonna work. So I smoosh the paint. I actually grabbed the brush and pulled it up a little bit more, mixing these colors together. And that leads me to the lesson that we can find in every single one of our mistakes. If we allow them, they can be the stepping stones to breakthrough. And the process will always be messy. It will never be the straight path. Planning is important. Practice makes progress. But despite all our preparation, each painting will teach something new with its own process. I'm certainly learning this lesson in life right now, but it's just about allowing these things to happen. A verse I've been clinging to so tightly lately is Romans 8, 28, reminding me to trust the process and what God is unfolding. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. So it's those beautiful daisies that we saw on our walk that I decided to pull in to this portrait. First, I laid down the vines and the little leaves. Then I used a violet with violet and white to create the petals. Then after I did a few more touch-ups on the dog fur and the collar, I went with a light gray, a very light gray, to pull out the petals in the foreground, those flowers that are getting the most light, which I did try to keep consistent with the light source we used for the dog. And then I added some cadmium yellow and yellow ochre and white for some of the daisy centers, but that would have been too light and got gotten lost in the background if I added them to the flowers on the far right. So I went with a violet center and that's just violet and a little bit of white. All right, creative, so I have a question for you. Are there any topics in acrylic animal art that you've been itching to learn more about? Maybe some areas in your paintings that you've been struggling with? Well, comment below with them. I need these questions so that I can help answer them in the upcoming tutorials. I'm planning a lot of topics for this year, for the fall coming up, that also applies to real-time tutorials. Are there any pets or wildlife that you'd like me to paint? Well, comment down below with them. And if this tutorial encouraged you, gave you a boost of color and hope, be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you again so much for watching. I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye.